Hi and welcome back to another VR tutorial. In this one we're going to look at our storytelling experience and see how we can go about adding a character. So before we get started I just want to kind of show you what we had in mind. So I wasn't going to have a character in this experience to begin with. It's, you were always just going to be like experiencing it as if it was you in the cabin. But I thought it would be quite interesting to actually look at using a character to actually drive the story forward and, and that's going to help convey a lot of emotion in the scene. Because you'll, you'll be feeding off what's happening to this guy here. So in this video I want to show you where you can get this guy from, how we can get him in the scene and then how we can use cinema machine and bits and pieces like that in order to actually make him move around the cabin and use Mixamo animations to bring him to life. I actually got this model from Sketchfab, it's, a, it's the rigged human character free and the, and the link's in the description for that and uh, you, can, you can use this for your projects, you're free to copy and redistribute the material in any medium or format so it's always when, when you're getting models and stuff from Sketchfab, it's always kind of great just to check that license. So we can we can remix, transform and build upon the material for any purpose, even commercially. This is great for me, I'm going to use this in, in my experience and give credit obviously to Blendtec for this awesome model. And you can go ahead and download this 3D model and uh, you can go ahead and download it as a GLB and it's going to download it for you. Once I downloaded my character, I actually had wanted to bring him into Blender because I needed to get an FBX for this to allow me to then upload to Mixamo and Blender was, um, was the only kind of program I can find at the minute unless you, I think you might be able to use like a plugin for other 3D software to actually import that file format. So I imported it into Blender and Blender's free and you can get that from their website and all I'm using Blender for is really just to export everything back out. So just, I'm just selecting everything and then export and I'm going to export that as an FBX. And then with that FBX, you can then upload your character to Mixamo, where you will be able to look at the animations. So from here, you can go to download and just download that character. First of all, you're going to need an idle one. We're going to go ahead and type in idle, and then you can pick any idle from the list that you feel looks good. And then um, you can see his arms are just tucking into his jacket there, so you can increase the arm space and nudge those out a little bit. Then you can go ahead and download that, and that is the character that will be imported into Unity. You click on download, go to format and choose FBX for Unity and then download. If you're a patron you can, and you're following along with this, you'll be able to grab um, grab the whole project from there if you don't want to go through actually like getting the character and going all through that process to get him into Unity. But if you don't have access to that, this is how you do it. So on our character, we just need to make sure our rig's generic. The avatar definition is created from this model. On your animation, just give it uh, the idle name. You can find it easier later on and then hit apply. Now you will notice probably that if you're doing it that way, like I've just done, I had some problems with the textures. They are all coming in. They weren't lining up. So after a bit of investigation, it turns out that you need to take the, f the texture into Photoshop, rotate it 180 degrees and then flip it on its on the horizontal axis and then bring it back into Unity and everything lines up again. But the the my, the copy the version on Patreon was all ready to go. Once I had my character and he's all textured up, I created an empty game object called Cabin Character, and I placed that at the at the ground level, right in the center of the character. So then I can this is the object that move, kind of moves around. This is what's going to control the position. This is parent object, and then the actual character model is a child inside that one there. And this is one that contains the animator for the movement of the character. At the moment, I think that he's just going to sit down. We have just, I was just testing it out quickly. So if I hit play, you can see I've got him sitting in the chair there, ready to have his dinner. So I've got this temporarily got this cabin character animator. And all I'm doing is, is, is just playing the, the sit idle. We're going to be rigging him up to use the animation rigging system in Unity, the package. And let's go ahead and bring that in now. And that's going to allow us to control easily his head direction and use targets to kind of put his hands on objects and leave them there as he's kind of moving around. I'm going to go to Window, Package Manager. We're going to go to Unity Registry. And we want to bring in the Animation Rigging Package, which is just here. We'll go ahead and bring that. We install. There we go. We've got all that installed there. So if we go ahead and close that down. And then what we'll do is we'll create a prefab of our cabin character, drop it in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rig this guy up. We can use the IK on his hands and his legs and also give him that head target. We need to create a, like a unity rig over the top of the Mixamo rig to enable us to do that and that's going to be easier in a, a new scene. We're going to go file, I'm going to save this scene, I'm going to go new scene, 
and it's just going to be empty. I'm going to drag in the cabin character. And now we'll go ahead and look at building out our rig to control all of his arms and his legs and give us an extra layer on top of the Mixamo animations. So to get started, we're going to click, click on our cabin character, which is just our root object. And on our character cabin FBX, where we've got our animators controlling all his animations, we'll go ahead here and we'll add in the rig builder. And we'll cl click on the plus to create another rig, which we'll go ahead and add in a second. So on our character cabin character FBX, we'll go ahead and create an empty object. And call this one rig. And we'll create another empty game object. It's head. And another one for the hands. Let's go ahead and set up the head first. On the head, if we go ahead and add a rig component, and then you see it needs to be referenced by the rig builder. So we go back up to the rig on our cabin carrot FBX and drop in the head. And then inside our head, we'll create an aim. We'll go ahead, create an empty object and we'll call this head aim. And on here, we want to create a multi aim constraint. And these are all part of the animation package we brought in, all these components. And the constrained object is going to be his head. So we want to open your character's rig and find where the head is and then drag and drop that into the constrained object. You can see if I select the head here and rotate it around, the head's going to move. And this is going to give us the ability to override whatever animation Mixamo is playing and allow him to look around at a target that we specify. So to set up that target, I'm going to right click on our head aim, go to create empty, and this is going to be our head target. And in our scene view, in the, on the right hand side, you'll see we've got a, a box for the animation rigging. We've got the head target shown there. We go ahead and click the plus. We're going to add an effector to this so we can visualize it in the scene view. So we click on the little plus and we'll start typing effector. You can see we've got a ball effector. And that's going to drop a little green sphere or a little red sphere into the scene view. And we're going to make it a little bit more friendly and make it green. And we can use this as a target. This is what the character is going to be looking at. So if we go back to our head aim, we've got the multi aim constraint under source objects. Go ahead and click plus and drag in the head target. And then we can control the weight of that, whether or not they're looking at it by the slider there and, and also the weight at the top. One important thing to note is the aim axis and the up axis. Your character might be rigged differently, but you can see I've got the aim axis as Z, which is looking forward and the up axis is Y. So if you go ahead and click on the head, make sure they've got the move tool selected and you're in local space. You can see that he's looking forward on the Z, which is the blue, and the up is the Y. We just want to make sure those are correct. That sets up our multi-aim constraint. I need to go back up to my cabin character root object here and just turn on the animator because I turned it off earlier. And the rig builder is going to need this in order for this to work. So what should happen now is at the moment, my cabin character should sit down because that's the Mixamo animation that I've got. So drop, drop back into our scene view, you can see he's seated there and he's looking at the, the green target. So if I select the effector, I can move this around. And this is going to add in that extra level of, de level of detail over the top of the Mixamo animations and allow me to control things separately from the animation that I've got from Mixamo. So this is really cool. So you can be able to look around the cabin and we, all we need to do rather than animate his neck is move this effector around and it's going to control how he looks. One thing though is we can go right round and make him look like he's from The Conjuring. So we can go back to our head aim and we can just make sure that we've got uh, the min and the max limit set. So we can put minus 60 and then 60 for the max limit. And then that's going to lock so he can't spin his head 360 like we need to get an exorcist. There we go, you can see he's going to stop moving there. So that's really cool, that's how we're going to control how he's looking around the cabin and we can animate that effector. Next we'll go ahead and add in the IK constraints for his arms so we can plant his arms on the table or on any object that we want to. Okay, let's go and set up the arms, so we extend our rig on our hands. Again, we'll go and add a rig to this and we'll go and drop that in our rig builder on our cabin character root and we'll make sure we dropped in the hands there. Now because we've got two hands we want to create an empty game object for the left hand and we'll duplicate that and we'll make one for the right. And on both of those you can multi-select this, go to add component, component, two bone IK constraint. We'll go ahead and back that on there. So let's look at our left hand first. So this two bone IK constraint we're looking at the left hand arm here. It wants a root, a mid and a tip. I also want some source objects that we'll set up in a moment. 
So if we go ahead and add the root, so we go to our armature or whatever your rig is, and I'm looking for the hands, but we'll go to our left because it's going to be our left shoulder, and then we'll extend the hierarchy down a little bit. And you can see we've kind of already got it laid out here for us. It's already set out in this kind of root, mid, and tip. So we'll click on our hands rig, and we'll drag in our left arm for the root, left forearm for the mid, and left hand for the tip. Now it wants a target, so something it's going to follow. So we'll go ahead and in our, when we've got our left selected there, we'll go right click, create empty, and this can be our left arm target. Now on this like we did with the head, we can go ahead and add an effector to, to this game object. So we we'll click on the plus and the shape will give it. Let's go to, let's start typing in effectors. It's going to give us all the shapes and we'll go to a square effector. And then with that square, with that left aim arm target selected in the hierarchy, if we click on that first and then also hold down control and select the left hand, we'll go to animation rigging and align transform. It's going to put that effector at the position of the left hand. So it's going to make it really easy for us to kind of see. Let's go ahead and make it a tiny bit bigger. So it's 0.15. And then we just need to drag in our left arm target into the target slot in the source objects. If we go ahead now and, and hit play, I go to my scene view, you see that my uh, effect is working. It's, it's making the hand go to where it needs to be. And then we can select that left arm target and then move it around independently of the animation that's playing. So if, if we wanted to like make sure that he was always had his hand on a cup, always had his hand on the edge of a table, Let's say the table was in front of him and he wanted to stand up. Normally people put their arms down and we make it easier for the animation. We can just put our effector on the edge of the table and have him stand up. And then we can animate the weight of that uh, left arm rig. So if you watch as I move the weight of the rig, it's going to go back to the default animation state. This is arm on his knee. And this is really going to help us uh, with our animations in the cabin. So that's working really well and we just need to go ahead now and do the same on the right hand. So we go to our right hand and we want to assign our root, mid and tip again. So we'll go back to our spine, we'll go to the right shoulder and we'll extend the hierarchy down so we can see everything. And then back on our rig, we can go to right arm for the root, right forearm for the mid and right hand for the tip. Can then create an empty game object and we can call this right arm target. Go ahead and add the square effector back onto there, make it 0.15. And if you remember how to do this, we need to align it up here. So click on our right arm target, hold down control, select the right hand, and go animation rigging align transform. And then back in our two bone IK constraint, let's drag in our right arm target to the target slot there. We can also go ahead and I'm not going to do this now, but we can assign like a hint, which indicates to the system the direction of the bend of the elbow, which um, we're not going to need for the moment, but we might set that up later. Uh, and that's as easy as doing one of the targets um, and then just adding a different effector and then placing it somewhere behind the character um, to indicate where that bend will be. So if we go ahead and hit play now, we'll go back to a seated position. And look like he's doing some kind of weird chicken dance. But we can select these effectors now and move his arms around. And we can animate all of this, and that's really cool. That's going to override the Mixamo animation. Or at least blend the two together. And again, we've got the weights on there, so we can reassign and do what we want. We can assign those weights and blend between the target and his normal animation. But because this is a prefab, yours might not be. I'm going to go to Overrides, and I'm going to go to Apply All. Then I'm going to go back to my cabin and I see in my scene, I've got my dude and if I hit play, he's going to sit down at the table doing his funky dance. And then in the, in the upcoming lessons, we're going to have a look at how we can use timeline to animate all these. We can animate all these targets and get them doing some really cool stuff and interacting with some of these props on the table. Looking at his target, we can bring it down there. Let's say we want him looking at the lantern, all we need to do is move our little effector over there rather than going in and animating his neck and stuff. 
this is really cool. You can look out the window, look at the door, and we can control this animation using timeline. So that's how you go about bringing in a character and, uh, and using the animation rigging package to add an extra layer of detail over your existing rig so that we can control him independently from the Mixmo animations. And I think having that character in the scene is really going to help tell the story because it gives you something to kind of play off. It allows you to drive that emotion that you're going for a little bit better as well. In the next session, we'll start animating our character, adding in a little bit of sound and start the first part of the story. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.